Welcome to 4 Crammed. This is the 2011 Asgardian debut directed by Kenneth Branagh that introduced us to our first gods of the MCU and of course fan favourite Loki. Let's go! Down in New Mexico, a team of late-night astrophysicists with supermodel looks and Stellan Skarsgård suddenly find themselves next to an unusual scientific event before hitting someone with their van. But let's go back a lot. Long, long ago, Vikings were cool with the idea that we're not alone out there and that we were all saved from a frost giant invasion by the Asgardians, powerful alien races lost to Norse mythology. Sir Anthony Odin drove them back to their own homeworld before nabbing the source of their power and returning home victorious to the eternal realm of Asgard. He has two sons, Thor and Loki, both born to be kings even if only one of them will actually take the throne. And that's Golden Boy, who in modern day is about to be proclaimed the new ruler, bad luck, even if he's an overly cocky showboater who's been entrusted with the mighty hammer Mjolnir. But down in the storeroom, frosty trouble is brewing as a few giants have snuck in to retrieve their relic. However, the destroyer security system is pretty legit. But having ruined his coronation, Thor would like to go on a revenge holiday to the Ice Realm. And although Odin forbids a military incursion on foreign soil, Loki hits him with a little reverse psychology to trigger an off the books dick swinging mission into Jodenheim with his crew, Volstag, Vandral, Hogan, and Sif. Don't worry about remembering their names. So they hit the Rainbow Bridge over to Heimdall, a rather serious Asgardian who usually sees all and is worth remembering, but beams them over by opening the Bifrost in short bursts so that the teleporting ray beam doesn't end up destroying stuff. So traveling the tundra, they fall under the gaze of King Laufey, who literally tells them they have a traitor and points out they're about to break Odin's thousand year truce while being outnumbered. But Temper is temper and a fight kicks off anyway. Thor has his godlike power and magic hammer, while Loki uses trickery to deal with his opponents. The touch of a giant is burning cold, but oddly Loki reacts by turning a little blue himself, before Robin Hood takes a wound and the team decide to fall back. Despite the amount of fun that Thor is having by killing the indigenous population in the conflict he provoked, before taking out a rancor, Odin beams down in full glory to apologize for the actions of a boy, but the peace is now broken and and he drags everyone home, where a big argument breaks out and, after some harsh words, Odin declares him unworthy and strips him of his powers before casting him out. Although he does also chuck in Mjolnir that can only be used by someone who's worthy, which is where we find him hit by Jane Foster on Earth where he gets the bonus welcome of being tasered, tranquilized in a bum at hospital, and then hit by Jane again once he escapes. Meanwhile, having landed separately, that unliftable hammer is becoming a local attraction, and Stan Lee confirms that it just won't budge, putting it on Agent Coulson's radar. Thor gives a gratuitous body shot so that Jane can explain she's single, but on Asgard, the rest of the crew realize that Loki is the jealous type, and start to wonder if he had the skills needed to sneak those frost giants in to mess with the coronation. Loki in the meantime confronts Odin as to why he's been turning blue, and discovers the Allfather kidnapped King Laufey's abandoned son back at the end of the war for a dream of uniting the two races. But Loki doesn't appreciate an entire lifetime of deception about being the very monster he grew to hate, and so Odin just pieces out mid-argument into a great Odin sleep to avoid dealing with the kids right now. So Loki just assumes the throne and makes it clear that he might be a dick ruler, who has no interest in allowing Thor to return, making it pretty clear where everyone stands. S.H.I.E.L.D. has gotten up to the old government special of confiscating everybody's stuff following the independent Fort alarm regarding the scientific possibility of aliens. So pissed off and wanting her life's research back, Jane gives Thor a lift to the S.H.I.E.L.D. base that's popped up around the hammer. Agent Sitwell is running the night shift, but Thor sneaks in by beating people up and setting off the alarms, while Special Agent Hawkeye targets from a high vantage point and reports directly to Coulson who lets things play out just in case anything interesting happens. But Thor is not worthy, and feeling truly abandoned gets taken into custody as Heimdall watches on. So Coulson runs a little bit of interrogation, but then Loki appears on Earth to tell Thor that their father is dead, and that he's been banished forever in order to maintain peace with Jodenheim, crushing the last of his brother, who repents his arrogant actions. He also tries a cheeky tug on the hammer, but who's he kidding? Jane Foster and co think there might 
must be some truth to Four's stories. So Selvig turns up to claim him, saying he's a steroid-using scientist who's just having a bit of a mental breakdown. And Agent Coulson again just lets things play out. So if nothing else to do, the lads just get really drunk, and Four has to bring Selvig home to the trailer. He and Jane share a moment and head to a rooftop to gaze into the fire, where he describes the link between the near-magical powers of his people and the known science and history of Earth. Loki, however, has gone totally off the books, and visits Jodenheim solo to offer King Laufey the chance to enter Asgard under his concealment to kill Odin in his sleep, securing him as a permanent king. Heimdall doesn't appreciate that there's someone who can travel around concealed from his eternal gaze, but for now he's bound by his oath to serve. The backup dancers, however, decide they need to get their prince back, defying royal decree. Heimdall can see their plot, but lets them go and get some answers, doing what he cannot by oath. So off they go to Earth without permission, and also grabbing the attention of S.H.I.E.L.D. They might look like a bunch of cosplayers, but everyone is happy to reunite, revealing Loki's lie about Odin and exposing his treachery. So in a desperate play, Loki sends the destroyer security drone to go down and eradicate everyone, and this prompts even Heimdall to step up to the God of Mischief. But the trickster has that Sub-Zero bloodline and freezes him into lockdown for now. The Asgard drone makes it to New Mexico, looking like an off-brand iron suit, until it starts blowing things up with a furnace beam. It's heading for town so our team gets everyone to evacuate, while Sif and the cosplayers free keep it distracted with a little bit of man tennis. These warriors do know their stuff. But Asgardian technology is almost magical, and the destroyer keeps going, laying the town to waste under Loki's remote command. Thor can see that it's hopeless this way, and sends his friends back, telling them he has a plan. But the truth is that in his mortal human state, Thor is ready to die, and asks only that after Loki has had his vengeance and kills him, that he let everyone else in the town live. And so he takes a mortal blow for the safety of Jane and the others, willingly sacrificing his life for the people. And in that moment, the scales are tipped. As the Allfather senses from within his Odin sleep, the Hammer Mjolnir now judges him to be worthy, and rockets across 50 miles of New Mexico in moments to return the Asgardian to his title and power. And so the God of Thunder whips up a storm, bats away the Devastator beams, and blows it wide open, saving the town. Jane gets a boner, and foretells Agent Coulson to give them all their stuff back. Loki, however, is in the process of letting the Frost Giants in to murder their father. And Heimdall, hearing Thor's call, breaks through the ice to slay the enemy and open the Bifrost with the last of his strength. Thor promises that he'll be back for Jane, but for now he's got some family to deal with. The Frost Giants enter Odin's chambers to gloat over his helpless sleeping form, but in the moment of glory, Laufey is killed by Loki, who has actually set the whole thing up to look like the good guy. But Thor arrives to let their mother know just exactly what's going on. Loki gets the drop and opens the Bifrost on Jodenheim, locking the beam in place that's causing the energy to build up and start to tear the planet apart, denying his own genetic heritage and committing genocide in order to prove himself to father. Thor doesn't want to fight his brother, but the god's madness leaves him no choice, and a little goading about Jane Foster sets them off. Thor has strength, but Loki has technique, and their fight blasts them out onto the Rainbow Bridge, where trickery and cunning gets the better of the god of thunder. But his power is returned, and so Thor just kind of bookmarks his brother for later, while he tries to close the Bifrost. But it's been open for too long, and can't be shut down, and so instead he destroys the Rainbow Bridge, isolating Asgard and breaking his promise to Jane for the sake of saving an enemy nation. A sacrifice that wakes the Allfather from his slumber, who arrives to save them both from tumbling into the abyss. But Loki, seeing the rejection in Odin's eyes, lets himself fall, an orphan prince with no true family. And as if waking from a dream, Jane is left back on Earth. Oh my god. And so in the kingdom of Asgard, friends celebrate the return of Odin from his slumber, and Thor as the god of thunder, but now a kinder god who mourns for Loki. He knows he is not yet fit to rule in Odin's place, with much to learn, but Earth is not lost to them for good, as Heimdall can see that Jane has not given up her search for him. 
And as Dr. Selvig is quietly taken in by Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D. to work on a mysterious power source, it would seem that Loki still has a part to play in everyone's fate after all. So thanks a lot for watching guys and hitting that subscribe button to help the channel grow. I keep reading all your comments and I really appreciate it. And of course I hope you've enjoyed having four crammed inside of you. I'll see you next time, so take care.